This is our combi or otherwise known as a V-Dub bus. This is our home, our adventure mobile and freedom vessel. And this is where we live and have been living for the past four and a half years since we initially bought it in Chile in South America. We've been driving it up and we are now in Seward, Alaska, enjoying the glorious sunshine. This seems so rare these days, but it's absolutely beautiful right now. We're going to give you a bit of a tour of our home and just let you know some of the mods that we've been doing and uh, how we can actually live in this tiny vehicle because it's a heck of a lot smaller than an RV, but somehow we make it work, right? And not just with the two of us, our project on this journey has been to pick up random strangers along the way. So we've had up over a hundred people living in this V-Dub bus with us. The first night Leah slept in the combi, do you want to tell them uh, about that? Yeah, the first night we slept in the combi with six people, so it was my introduction to combi life and I fell in love with it somehow. I've somehow, six and she's still here then. like two years later. Six people inside that combi sleeping, believe me, it was, it, it was a horrific <laughs> night. But let's let's have a little look at the, the wonder beast that we call Capito. You have probably seen a V-Dub bus before, it looks like a 70s bus, right? It is not a 70s bus, this is actually a 1992, which is kind of unbelievable. It's made up by, with a bunch of different parts in South America in 92. They just took all of the leftover bits from all the Volkswagens. So our doors here are from the 50s, our back windows, which we'll see in a minute, are from I think the 60s, pre-67, like the front lights here are all 70s, so it's a real kind of mongrel basically, and that's kind of how it got here as well because we've made so many repairs on the road it's uh it's been kind of patched up and and thrown back together a hundred million times i swear i can't count them on all my fingers and toes <laughs> you see that we've got the chilean plates here so it's proof that we're actually telling the truth we did drag this or push this mostly somehow from south america the cockpit the driver's cockpit you'll note here that we've got two fire extinguishers um, the reason is that uh, for that is that we're a little bit fire paranoid after we had a fire just recently in the combi. The uh, solar panel basically became activated over winter and melted our lithium battery which caused a fire. The bed and sofa to burn, all the wood to burn, it was a horrific mess wasn't it? Was. It? Like it was just fire damage, uh, smoke damage, sorry, but uh, it didn't do much damage in the car at all. It says empty. It, uh, that's not good. That's not good. We, we've got to back up. <laughs> Maybe we should get three fire extinguishers. Seriously, I'm so fire paranoid. Usually in these kind of vehicles, um, they're famous or infamous for having fire in the Usually engine compartment. In the engine, yeah, yeah. The inside of the car. This, this is where it all sit. It all, it all happens. This is the most comfy seat in the house usually because there's a lot of people in the back. It's a really simple vehicle, the old V-Dub bus. They're not the best overlanding vehicles, but they just bring a smile to every face that you encounter on the road. And for that reason, we absolutely love our little combi. Everybody smiles at us. Like I kind of feel like they're smiling at me, but they're smiling at the vehicle. I know that. But yeah, we love our little car. The important thing to note is the oil pressure. We installed that afterwards um, to give us an idea of how the engine is performing. We've dragged it over the Andes Mountains, I think seven times, um, which was quite an effort. And that little device there told us how close we were to blowing up another engine. 11 times I've had the engine out of this thing and rebuilt, um, mainly because the parts have been really hard to find. The mechanics haven't been very good in remote areas so yeah we've really kind of struggled to get up to Alaska and that's why we're really appreciating being here at the moment. Our fuel gauge stopped working a little while back so we've had a second fuel gauge installed which doesn't actually work. When it says zero it means that the tank is full and as it gets empty it rises to a quarter tank so anywhere near a quarter tank and we need to pull over and get gas. That's our combi. We've got these runners on the side here which um, in the hotter countries people have been using as our air conditioning because it gets so hot in the car when you're driving these long roads and we drive very slowly that people tend to hang on the outside of the vehicle so we had these installed all the way around. Oh, the surfboards. Ben's been two weeks to surf in Alaska at the moment. <laughs> you will though. I've got two wetsuits. Two suits. wetsuits on. Both of them with holes so mm -hmm. I will get in the water at some point. Got two surfboards because we give a lot of surf lessons to the people that come in the bus. One, one uh, learner there and 
something a little bit more nimble for me in the bigger waves down in Peru and, and Mexico. Are we going to talk about the engine, the infamous no, combi can we, engine? Let's, can we just skip past this no, part this of the car? Not, and this is my favourite part of the car. No, no, no we, you don't this need to weird. open that, come on. <laughs> this is where Ben spends most of his time, with his head in the engine or yeah. underneath the car. I don't actually live in the car, I live in this compartment here nursing the little engine if you'd have seen this a week ago it was absolutely covered saturated in oil we had a bad oil leak it was just coming out of everything spinning around on the pulley here and flying up now one of the things that drew me towards the bus in south america when i was looking for a vehicle they didn't really have any rvs down there so i couldn't find anything more comfortable but the bus presented itself and i've been told that the engines were really easy to work on um, i wasn't told that you need to work on them all the time so <laughs> I don't know whether it's, you know, swings and roundabouts. It is pretty easy to work on. I now know how to rip that thing apart and put it back together with my eyes closed, which is reassuring because having such a simple motor when we're so far remote and off the beaten track means that I can pretty much fix any problem that we encounter, right? Yeah. This is actually, this motor is actually from a, a Beetle in Mexico, um, a, a late model 2001 Beetle. It's not your standard air-cooled engine. It is still air-cooled, but Believe it or not, this little beast has a computer that controls the fuel injection, which astonishes me. Still manages to misbehave. We have two batteries installed here and a further deep cell battery. That's the main starting battery. This is a deep cell 100 amp, and we have another 100 amp deep cell battery. We don't need all that power. We don't have a fridge, as you'll see the inside in a minute, but we do do a heck of a lot, a heck of, a lot of video editing for our YouTube channel. And so we really need those amp hours to uh, charge the cameras and the batteries and the microphones and all that jazz. Can we step away from this place now? Because Bad memories. Bad memories, yeah. And we have our shower, which we haven't been using in Alaska at all because it's been too cold. Yeah, but, solar shower. But in the, the uh, warmer climates, it is a lifesaver. So we use this for showering, we use it for rinsing dishes, what else we use it for? Washing dogs. Washing dogs. Um, recycling baby wipes. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. We don't, we don't do that. We throw them away. Come on. That pressurizes the shower. It's basically it a bicycle work, pump. Though. It used to work. It used to work. The, it had a, a little uh, air valve on the top of this road shower. It's actually really cool, this road shower, because not only does it get hot when the sun's out, you can also pressurize it. It hold, only holds about six gallons of water, but. Um, that's enough to see us a few days. We're pretty conservative with the water. So that's been a real little treat that we've had, that we've added to the combi. And our tooly for extra storage. That mostly has camping gear in there. We um, offer free accommodation to the people that we pick up on the side of the road. So if they don't have a tent or, or hammock or something, we have, I think, five hammocks, two tents, three tents. I don't know, I lose count. Ben has a basketball in there for some reason. I gave the basketball away. Did you? It's not in there anymore. Yeah, I gave the basketball away. Room. Lastly, on the roof, we have our solar panel. It's just a single solar panel at the moment, but, but we will be expanding it, the capacity because it's only 100 watts and we could do with a few more panels, I think, to enable us to fully work off grid 100% of the time. Take it away into the house. Our tiny, tiny home. This is the kitchen, very compact. This is our food storage and our kitchen. It's very messy at the moment, I apologize. We just have a two burner stove. That's it, no oven, unfortunately. No fridge, no oven. We just recently got a, a cool box to hold our fish that we've been catching, but usually we don't have anything, do we? Yeah. We without it. When we stepped into Chris and G's uh, RV before, we had envy straight away. You see the space they have? Yeah. They have a bathroom, a toilet, I know. a sink and a shower. There's a f reason we film a lot of stuff inside the car with, uh, with a GoPro because it make it look a little bit bigger, but you wouldn't need to do that. You've got plenty of space. So everything in here has at least two uses, at least. Like our drum here, it can be a drum or a laundry basket. Yeah, that's our Peruvian cajon. It's a box drum. Absolutely love that thing. It's a seat as well. A seat, seat and a table. A, a seat, a table, a drum and a laundry basket. This is just extra storage. One of our batteries lives in there. We have a few more hammocks. Um, this is our library. Our, I don't know what you call the place where you keep bottles of stuff. Shower this stuff. is all of our shower stuff. This is clothing for two to three people. Just cut currently two people. Uh, it's not a lot of space. We 
yeah we really don't have a lot of space to be honest but you know we make it work the great thing about having a small form factor camper compared to like a big like class a motorhome for example is that we can get you know to, to places like this now like a, a small riverside camp it's free living you know we're living off grid and having an awesome time so the sacrifices we make with not having those comforts in a bigger vehicle is made up for by having the freedom of being able to go to like more places. You need to, to make the bed, you need to take everything, all the storage items out from the back, put it in the front, fold out the bed, nope. move the water bottle. So everything kind of yeah. needs to be shifted and moved around just to make the bed work. It is a bit of a shuffle. Um, we usually when we pick up hitchhikers we have all of their backpacks in the back here so this is absolutely chock-a-block with um, other people's equipment and then every night we move all of that into the front seat and kind of like build up the front and make a little space for a little alaskita here to to sit and sleep it's a bit of a pain but yeah to get basically like, we're really good at moving together like we'll be both be in here we don't have the pop-top version of this camper so we do this like little shuffle it can jump up a second and then like this is literally how it plays out like what we're doing right now is like we'll just move around each other and then um you know we get pretty quick at doing it our water bottle lives up there the drum comes out here this is the two burner cooker that we have you've seen these things before you know great little device that lives there this is our solar charger this one works much better than my previous one which we suspect was the reason for our fire which started under the seat here where we had a battery completely burnt the entire seat this one we found in whitehorse in another bus that we pulled out and burnt all the wood up here this all had to be replaced we varnished everything you know that seems like a pain in the butt you got what you've got to bear in mind is we're giving this vehicle away in like a matter of weeks we're making that draw so we always promised that we would give this bus away to one of our supporters of our project at the end of the journey and so when it burnt down and we only had like well, like six eight weeks left to travel in it we were like oh my god all that work for nothing no, but it was worth it it was worth a trip fixing it from the trip out to alaska yeah we did, we did all that restoration just so that we could experience a summer in alaska that's how good it is being up here for all those people that haven't been here before it's worth it so after we've moved all of this we uh kind of lift up the storage here this is where we keep a lot of our camera equipment like a drone and we have two laptops so we can both be doing editing and we do a podcast as well all of our uh, mechanical bits down there some electrical high high-tech stuff and then this comes out and then that all goes back and then somehow, usually Leah does this. Yeah, and then so then we just basically both crawl up like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more comfy than what it looks. Honestly, it's, it's actually really comfortable. Sometimes people come up to us, invite us into their house and say, you can sleep in a proper bed. And we're like, no, nah, we'll sleep in a uh, comfy bed. It's no, fine. it's all right. So we've spent the last four and a half years filming what it's like to live with the people that we pick up um, and what it's like to discover the places that we go to all the way through the Americas from Chile to Alaska. And that's all on our, on our YouTube channel called Combi Life with a K, K-O-M-B-I. And um, yeah, that's the life of this Combi vehicle. You can follow our adventures and um, check out what we've been up to. And after we give away this van, we're also going to get another van, draw it up and go to Europe. And then across to India. Across to India. And then we're probably going to get a boat and Leah wants to do a motorbike trip at some point. Trip. <sighs> Never ending. Basically we have a whole heck of a lot of adventures that we're going to be sharing with you guys. So check out the channel. It will be worth your time.